Hello everybody, we're back to pre-algebra again. Ordering a PowerPoint, uh, ordering the email here. 10.1 is uh, simplifying square roots now. We're further going into our uh, simplifying square roots. Here is our learning objective and then here is our standard. Solving right triangles. <clears throat> We're getting ready here to go into some trigonometry. And then here's the bell work for this lesson right here. Which is, uh, well, I'll let the students handle that. Then we have this here. Good bell work. Then this is a classwork, page one of our class worksheet. Square roots, we have radical and then radicand. We get into some terminology here, radical, then the radicand. Here's your radicand. Radical symbol, and then blah, 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 non-negative square root. For example, square root 25. Uh, equals 5 because pi squared equals 25. We're not getting into imaginaries yet, that's later, but we're definitely getting into taking square roots of numbers. And then here is a vocabulary. This is, goes into your notebook students. Define these using the prior information that you have. Define those in your own words. Write this out. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Example one, use a calculator to find the square roots. Find the square root of 52. And then this shows your keystrokes here, 52 radical or radical 52 enter. You should get this on your calculator. So the approximation is 7.2. You round down here from your one. And then this goes into more of a qualitative as a uh, conclusion from that. <clears throat> so negative 49, it goes further into this. So 52 should be between the square root of 49, 64, 7, or 8. So we're, we're still, we're using a approximation here as well. And these, that technique is good for high stakes testing like your SAT and your benchmark tests, by the way, students. Okay, so guided practice, and then here's the independent practice. Check that your answer is reasonable, so they want you to reason using the uh, nearest known perfect squares. And this one here, I leave this open. Or do I, no, there you go. I go ahead and I do both here. It must be around Christmas time or something. Because <laughs> I, I did both of these for you class. Here's your 27, square root 27, 5.2, blah, blah, blah. And it goes into the reasoning here between 25 and 36. So square root 27 should be between 5 and 6. The answer 5.2 is between 5 and 6. So here's the reasoning here to justify your calculator outreach. I think it's a little bit much. But it's, it's good to know, at least in your mind, that you know mentally what's going on here. It gives you good number sense. So when you're doing your mental math, you you know what you're you're doing and thinking. And then here, 46 is between 36 and 49, so it's between 6 and 7. And 6.8 is between 6 and 7. And 46 is way closer to 49 than it is to 36, so it makes sense, yes? Their classwork into example two, finding side lengths now. Use the Pythagorean theorem. We've covered that. 
So here's the Pythagorean theorem right here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so we know uh, our A and B, we just need to find a hypotenuse here. So here is our setup here, A squared and B squared. What is our C squared here? plus 3 equals c squared 5 equals c squared 5 is not a perfect square does not produce a perfect square so we probably have to use a calculator take the square root of each side use a calculator 2.2 .2 is approximately what c is so 2.2 .2 is what this is right here then we have a guided practice. Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse here. We knew our A, we know our B, so we can find our C. Same thing down here, students. Find your hypotenuse down here. You know your A, you know your B. So here, I really must be Christmas time. I did your independent practice. That comes up first. Let me come up with the square root of 29 for C here. And then 2 times the square root of 5 for C here on the guided practice here. Got square root of 20. We factor out a square root of 4, which is 2 times the square root of 5. So that's your C there. Multiplying radicals, you can use the product property of radicals to multiply radical expressions. This is a good uh, concept slide here that you need to get down because you'll be using this property. And then here is your product property of radicals. Put this in your own words, students. Define that in your own language. And then radical expression, define that in your own language. Example three, multiply radicals. So guess what property we're going to use? We're going to multiply radicals. So we're going to use our uh, product property of radicals to solve this A here. Equals 21. There's, what's his name's back? Tony Hawk comes back. <clears throat> and then for B here, uh, what's the, what would be the final product here of square root of two times square root of eight? Tony Hawk flies away. We have uh, the radical 2.8, which is radical 16, which is what? It's four. So that's using the product property of radicals here. Okay, up here we have our guided practice, multiply the radicals and simplify. So 11, radical 11 times radical six. And then down here, this is for you. Maybe I'll do this, maybe I won't for Christmas time here. Two and four points. I do. It's still Christmas. So we multiply this together. Five times radical 3.3. .3. Five times radical 9 is 15 here. And then for your guided, we multiply that together. We have radical 66. You can finish that off with your calculator or you can approximate it. Simplifying radicals, you can always use the product property of radicals to simplify expressions, which we've been doing. Where a is greater than zero, b, we don't want any negatives underneath your radical. That way we get into uh, imaginary numbers. We're not there yet. To factor the radican, look for perfect square factors. Always look for perfect square factors underneath the radical here. Simplifying radicals here. So simplify this radical. Is there a perfect square underneath within 12? 
where there is right here, you have radical 4 times radical 3. This is how you factor them. So radical 4 is, you know that, times radical 3. So it's 2 times square root of 3. And then B here, is there a perfect squared? It's a, a factor of 45. Radical 9 times radical 5. Uh, 3 times radical 5. So that's the way that you would factor these out. You would simplify these radical expressions by factoring out a perfect square. Okay, simplifying radical expression. Both of these here. Is there a perfect square that's a factor of 112? Is there a perfect square that's a factor of 75? Now, 75, 25 is a perfect square, so 5 times square root of 3. This is not a perfect square, so you just leave it, unless you want to use your calculator. And then for your guided here, 16 times 7. 16 is a perfect square, so it becomes 4 times radical 7. Then here's our homework for this uh, section here. Use a sheet here, class. Use your own paper here to put these solutions on. If you can't put fit your solutions onto this sheet, attach a sheet and staple it to it. Okay, would you? Homework. Same thing here. Staple a sheet to it if you don't have room on this sheet. Evaluate the expression above as a model. So here's there's good modeling here to find the solutions to these. Multiply the radicals here. Use the multi the product property of radicals to solve that. And then simplify the radical. Attach sheet, students. This will be too crowded. It's a big heavy homework assignment here, but it's important. And then here you'll have to attach a sheet here to solve these, to have room to solve these out. So do that. Find the measure of angle one here. So using your, your knowledge of uh, the interior angle measure of a triangle to solve those. And then again, for ordering information, email me here. And you can either order this PowerPoint or you can get the video, depending upon what you wish. And you can get worksheets and tests and that kind of stuff from me as well. Thank you.